Hello, good morning everyone. I on behalf of Edge Dental PG welcome you to this uh, session and today we are going to discuss the remaining MCQs really on public health dentistry that were asked in both INICT and NEET MDS. We discussed uh, 8 questions in the last session. Today we would be discussing uh, 2 questions were asked on tests and significance, 2 were asked on prevention, 1 was asked on bias, 1 was asked on scales but the entire question is not uh, is not in memory of the students and presentation of data had one question. The question on prevention and presentation of data were basically in INICT and not NEET MDS but we will revise them. So the two questions on tests of significance, the first, uh, one question asked was related to there were two groups pregnant and non-pregnant women. non-pregnant women and uh, they were given glucose uh, the glucose levels of these two groups were checked and which test would be used to compare between these two groups was the question that was asked so whenever we are comparing between two means it is student t test whenever there are two means it is student t test and whenever there are more than two means, it is always ANOVA. The other question that was asked was comparison between three groups on a continuous scale. The answer was ANOVA. That is analysis of variance test. So this is what you need to remember. Whenever means is in question, it is student T test ANOVA. Whenever means is in question, the data is going to be quantitative and hence parametric tests would be used. Whenever the question comes to related to proportions, the answer is going to be chi-square. So whenever two proportions would be compared, it would be chi-square. Whenever there would be more than two proportions, there would be Kruskal-Wallis. Now there are a lot of non-parametric tests, other tests which come into question. But these are the ones which are commonly asked considering the undergraduation level. So what you need to remember is when there are two means, it is student T test. When there are more than two means, it is ANOVA. Also this student T test particularly is classified, uh, is again has two types. That is there is paired and unpaired. Paired and unpaired. Now we will take the same example of pregnant and non-pregnant women. Pregnant and non-pregnant women when compared between pregnant and non-pregnant we will use the unpaired t-test. That is there would be two different data sets. Whereas when we will compare between the glucose levels of pregnant women before and after a particular drug it would be paired t-test. What does that mean? That it is the data is obtained from the same sample which is taken at two different times. It could be before, after or it could be some one month before and one month after or before pregnancy, after pregnancy but it would be in the same sample. Whenever, whenever there are two different samples, it is unpaired. Whenever there is same sample, it is going to be paired. So this is another important and confusing part that the students face. So this is related to the two questions that were asked on tests of significance. Now there were two questions on prevention. Now one question in this prevention was related to the primordial prevention. Like uh, what is that particular disease which has to be prevented before it enters the country. So that is primordial prevention. Now what is primordial prevention? It is the prevention or the steps that we take before there is a risk factor, exposure of the risk factor. Now, for example, we can consider the example of COVID-19. Now, it is being said that the new strain of COVID-19 has come and that is why the international flights are already blocked. We do not want that strain to come in India. So, that is basically primordial prevention. If we are talking in case of uh, considering the dental scenario, we can say that consider there is a village which is very far away from uh, any of the fermented carbohydrates. So, uh, we will take measures that these fermented carbohydrates never enter that village. That would be primordial prevention. And the other types of prevention are basically 
Prevention is basically of four types. One is primordial. One is primary. Secondary. And tertiary. So primordial is when there is no exposure. Primary is when there is exposure but no disease. There is exposure but no disease. That is we are exposed to chocolates and fermented carbohydrates but not everyone has dental caries. But we will take steps so that we do not develop dental caries. That is primary prevention. Secondary prevention is disease is in the initial stages and there is no loss. So when we say secondary prevention, it means that we are talking about restoring the carious lesion so that it does not go into loss of tooth. And tertiary prevention is a stage when we will prevent handicap or disability. Now in case of dental scenario, loss of tooth is considered to be handicap. So loss of tooth is basically prevented in tertiary prevention. Now all the examples that I gave were related to dental caries. Now if we take this consideration in case of cancer, what would have oral cancer, what would happen is primordial prevention would be all those risk factors the person is not exposed to. So if in a place there is no tobacco sold at all, no cigarettes uh, sold at all, that would be primary primordial prevention. Then primary prevention is a per, we, uh, person is consuming tobacco, but we are advising him not to continue the habit further because he would not develop uh, oral cancer or precancerous lesion of course. Secondary is when there is leukoplakia or OSMF developed but there is no full fledged oral cancer still. So we would motivate the patient to quit the habit and treat the existing condition so that he comes back to normal. That is secondary prevention. And tertiary prevention is when he has got oral cancer the surgery and rehabilitation would come under tertiary prevention. So this is basically the primordial, primary, secondary, tertiary. Now another one question was asked was related to primordial. The second question was asked was screening of oral cancer comes under which stage of prevention and the answer there is secondary prevention because screening is done in both diseased and non-diseased population. That is why it is considered to be under secondary prevention and not primary. So this was the question related to Prevention. Two questions were asked both in INI CT. Next we move on to bias. Uh, now bias is basically a systematic error. I have already posted a video on bias and confounding factors uh, in the on our channel. So I would be putting the link on the of that particular video in the description box. Do check that video also for further and extra details. Bias is basically a systematic error which we come across whenever we are doing any kind of study. So we need to take a few steps to prevent the bias. Uh, rather we cannot prevent but reduce the error due to bias. The question asked uh, in the quest, uh, exam was related to difference in the admission rates of patients to the hospitals gives rise to which type of bias. The answer was Berkinsonian bias. This particular bias is common in case control study. Now the reason for this particular bias is what happens is whenever patients are admitted to the hospitals they would be in different uh, stages of disease. So if we take an example of oral cancer we could have a person in the stage 1 cancer. Someone may get admitted when he is in the stage 2, someone in the stage 3, someone who is in the almost on the last stage of cancer. So when such different uh, people get admitted the values or the results that we get from the study we do would be different. So whatever bias is uh, results due to difference in the administ administration rate, it is called as the Berkinsonian bias. It was basically given by Berkinsonian and hence it is the name. So what we need to remember here is how to eliminate this bias. We need to be specific in the stage of the disease. Like we can say all those people who are admitted only in the stage 1 would be considered in our study. So that we eliminate all those other people who would be in the different stages and we would reduce the error that is produced due to Perkinsonian bias. Then the other question was asked was related to the scales. Now scales are basically again of four types. First one is the nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. 
these are the four types of scales uh, that we encounter in statistics. So what happens in these scales, uh, the question was not completely, uh, mem the entire question that was asked, but probably the answer was ordinal because they were talking about the different stage, uh, different stage of the dis uh, order of the pain that was uh, encountered by the patient and under which scale does it come. But we will just look into what are the other scales are. First is the nominal. The nominal scale is only categories. So it could be like, uh, it could be anything like gen uh, gender or religion or marital status. What happens in it, this is that, now when we talk about nominal, what does scale basically mean? Going from small to big or big to small. That is there is a uh, change in every stage that we are having. But in case of nominal what happens is you cannot say that one is better than the other. So we cannot say that in the gender female is better than male or the male is better than female. Or whenever it comes to religion we again cannot say one religion is better than the other. Or when it comes to marital status we cannot say that one state, uh, status is better than the other. So they are basically categories. None of them one is better or the other. They are just we are dividing the population in categories. There is no order. Then next is ordinal. Here there is order which exists but there is no specific gap between two orders. Now what is the example? We can say that uh, like mild, moderate and severe. So the difference between mild and moderate is not similar to the difference between moderate and severe. Also among patients it would be different. What pain is mild to me may be severe for you. So that is how it changes but there is order. Mild is less, moderate is more and severe is very high. So this is basically ordinal scale. Now interval scale, there is definite order and there is definite interval between the two orders. But there is no true zero. Now why is this true zero so important? Because what does true zero mean? Now if you are calculating temperature, does it mean that zero degrees means no temperature? No. Zero degrees means at that level, the water converts to ice. So basically that zero has some value even in the interval scale. And so there is a separate scale called ratio which exists where zero is zero. What does that mean? If the weight of some object is 0 0.1, that means it only weighs 0.1 grams. So that particular zero has some value. If I say that there are zero students in the class, that means that there are no students in the class. So that particular zero has a value. In both interval and ratio are for quantitative, uh, the quantitative data and both of them have ordered, both of them have same interval between two orders. That is one higher and lower, it would have the same order. But interval has no true zero, ratio will have the true zero. So these are the scales. Then uh, last question that was asked was related to presentation of data. It was a question in INICET. Uh, the question was asked related to which kind of among the options given which of the method of data presentation is used for meta-analysis and systematic review. Uh, the answer was forest plot. Now these are the newer techniques of data presentation which was which don't exist in the textbooks today. Forest plot is one of the uh, methods of data presentation for systematic analysis and meta uh, and meta analysis and what another you need to remember is in relation to this forest plot it's called a forest plot because uh, it looks like a forest of many values because values of different systematic and uh, systematic uh, reviews is presented in one data so that is why it's called as a forest plot another is the funnel plot now, funnel plot is the method used for publication bias. Again, which comes in publication bias is something which is seen again in systematic review and meta-analysis. So, you need to remember these two terminologies which are new considerably for the undergraduation levels. I hope all of you have understood. If any doubts, anything that is not clear if or if any topic that you want to be discussed, Please do comment in the video and we would surely take in further. Thank you very much. Do subscribe to our channel Edge Dental PG. Have a nice day.